Hey, this is Charles Calhoun, a.k.a. The Shade Tree Pro. We've got a hot one here in Florida today. But, just the same as it's hot, I'm going to bring something to you hot. Once again, I'm going to sweat a little bit, so get prepared for it, because, you know, I'm doing this outdoors for real. You always know that I talk about uh, I'm not a hip action guy. Well, I'm getting ready to give you a little, little bit of uh, a secret of Mo Normans. As I said before, I'm not trying to discover the golf swing. I understand it. I'm not trying to figure out Mo Norman's golf swing. I'm trying to improve on it. And here, let me get something here. We're going to work on those improvements today. Now, I argue all the time that the golf swing is not in the hips. The hips don't swing the golf club. The arms swing the golf club. But it's time I let you know how it's done. Now, when it comes to swinging the golf club, the swinging of the golf club comes from the upper body. So there is an order, just like we try to find an order and sequence, whether it's in our routine, however we set up, all that stuff. There is also an order that follows the body. And if you fight that order, then you can lead yourself to injuries. And especially in the upper body, because you got so much speed coming through, if that sequence is off, you can easily hurt your wrist. Oh man, you can. I've, I've done it, put a lot of pressure, like whoa. But anyway, what controls the upper body? What's the boss of the upper body? Well, because I told you you have your shoulder girdle that sets up on top of your uh, body cavity, the controlling of the shoulders are the chest muscles and what we call, you, of course, the pec muscles. And of course, the scapulas control the shoulders. So what we're trying to do as I get away from overdoing and it's done too much, the overdoing of the lower body. The lower body is creates power and it reacts. And the purpose of the lower body is to move the arc over from where we started. If we stay in a, from a centered position, we gotta get the arc moved over. Not moved around, we gotta move it over. Just like grabbing a weed eater and just coming down the line in a sense. You're moving the body. The body is moving the, moving the blade. So how do we make the golf swing work on the swinging part of it? You'll get your alignments of the arm, but this right here, this is the principle that you must have. And then you and then and then I'll go on and let you know why women are so fluid, especially on the LPGA, so fluid even with their golf swings. And it's there is an anatomical reason, in my opinion, for that. Now, when you make a golf swing, you are swinging the arms. And when I get in my setup position, ball position, ball position, setup, grip, takeaway, swing, all of that. This right pec muscle is strong enough to basically take both sides of the arms back. That's our sensation that we're feeling. But because the right side is what's going back, it has to dominate it. It's the boss, because this is the right side, this is the direction we're going, the right side dominates it. So when I'm making a backswing, start, so it's just like you're starting, whatever the deal is, the sensation that you're feeling in the upper body is the right pec muscle rotating this way, rotating in the, in the direction in which you're turning, rotating that way, taking the club back. That takes the club back. That's the feeling of the club being taken back by the upper body above the hips, above the hip sockets. That's the sensation, boom. And it's just a rolling of the chest, feeling it rotate. See what I mean? Feel it rotate. Now. Once you see that, now look at look how easy I can get that up there. Because it takes both arms up there. Now, when you're getting ready to make a down swing, then all you're doing, as the lower body shifts, all you're doing is reversing the action. Now, it's the left pec muscle that's bringing both arms down. See, get to the top. The left pec muscle brings both arms down. So I'm gonna hit a, hit a shot here. 
Right one, pec takes them both arms back. Left pec brings both of them through. See, because now, by having the one pec taking both of them back, you build a center point. So you got two arms, one pec. You see what I mean? One, two, three, kind of like it, it makes sense, you know? One, one side, one middle. And then when you come through, same thing, one, two, three, two, I mean, excuse me, two sides, one middle. So when I take it back, right pec takes it back, both arms back. Left pec, bring both of them through. Now you see that I'm not overdoing my body. What I'm doing is I'm creating a swing that is rotating in front of me. Now see how easy this is consistently in front of me. Now the pec allows my arms to rotate in front of me. That's why you often hear me say, that the shoulder sockets, the shoulder scapulas, they're the most superior joints in the, in the human body. And I think people get power and speed confused. So you got to learn that, yes, the lower body will create power, but the upper body is what creates speed. And more importantly, it creates consistency. So once again, I stand there. Right pec takes the, both arms back, left pec brings it through. Now you have to work on, you know, getting the proper alignments of your arms and all that. I won't, you know, that's, I'll say that one. But before, so, cause there's no need of me constantly making my arguments about how I don't, don't uh, see the, the hip action as being, you know, the, the controller of the golf swing, you know, where the hips action is a reaction to what the swing needs to do. It moves the swing. Now that's not to say that you can't build, you know, a little resistance to create a little bit more force speed. Yeah, you can do that. But when you make the hips overtake the golf swing, you know, you're, you're in a constant state of recovery. And a lot of times when people are overjacking those hips, then man, it puts so much pressure because you don't get into the sequence of the chest, as I call it, the gluteus maximus of the upper body. You don't get the sequence in, and then all of a sudden, boom, you put a lot of pressure on your wrist. And, you know, and some of my, I, I think that may have been something that's happened a lot to Michelle Wee. You know, she's got a lot of wrist surgery. But even, even if she gets better, that if she doesn't get her body into the sequence of moving like it's supposed to, then it, it, it's the, the, I don't think, think the injuries may heal themselves. You know, it could be other things, but... I know for example, for uh, a good fact is that once the body starts, you start doing something wrong. Injuries is a result of the body telling you, you are doing something wrong and you need to make a change. First, it's just a little twin. It's like, oh man, well, and if you don't make a change on something that you're doing, then eventually it's going to put so much stress on it that it can't take it anymore and it's going to hurt you. So once again, remember. Don't forget, you'll get your setup. I talk about my setup. You know how I do the dorsiflexion of the toes, locate the first rib, push down, acetabulum is over the femoral heads to get you in a posture every time. And then allow yourself basically to let your arms hang, take your proper grip, all that stuff. Right chest takes both arms back and left chest, pec muscle bring both of them through. Remember, it's rotating this way to get the arms up. And then it rotates that way to get it through. And it is powerful enough to be able to bring both arms. Now, that's not saying that the, both the right and chest are not, and left chest are not working together. They are working together. The only difference is, is that because we're moving, as I said, because we're moving to the left side, the left side, the left pec muscle is going to be dominant, in a sense. Just like the right is going to be dominant because the right is connected to the right pec muscle. So once again, set up there. Feel the right pec muscle, roll it back. That gets you up there. And then all of a sudden, the left one brings it back. Now, I made a statement earlier about the fluidity of females' golf swing. Now, I was watching my daughters, you know, and as I say, daughters, females. And they don't, they don't really play much golf, but they swing it every once in a while for me. But think about female golfers. Think about it. 
It's natural. Their swings are so smooth. And we always talk about what can we learn by watching the LPGA women. Well, I'm just now telling you what you can learn. Because of their breasts, when they make a swing, it's obvious they got they have to move out of the way. I mean, they got to get them moving out of the way. So it's just natural because if they protrude just like, you know. So it's just a natural feeling in a sense of getting one out of the way and then getting the other out of the way as they come down. I mean, it's almost like it's a guide for allowing them to be able to swing. And, you know, and, and I will tell you this, you know, my wife cracked up laughing at me because when I do my testing, I do my testing. I actually took one of my wife's bras and I don't care. My, my kids said my chest is big enough to wear one anyway, but that's another story. They young and don't know nothing. But anyway, but I actually took a, took a, uh, a bra and I actually put it on and I actually put, build it up so I can get a feeling of a sensation. Now I wasn't looking for what I've just recently described. That's not exactly what I was looking for. I was testing something else. And to my credit for doing that, I actually start realizing like, wow, okay, I get that. That makes a lot of sense. So it's funny how you're looking for one thing and you find something even better. So it gave me a better way of explaining exactly what it is that I'm trying to do and why it is that I said that the lower body reacts to the swinging of the golf club. Because when a kid picks up a golf club naturally, most of the time they just pick it up and they swing. And they just swing. And without all the thoughts of what the lower body is supposed to do and all of that, I think, and I've said it before, even far as the lower body, even the way I see the lower body being taught, if the whole purpose is to stay behind the golf ball so we can swing, even the lower body is not taught in the proper fashion. And that's why most of these guys, like Mo Norman said, that most of these golf swings won't repeat. Because if, if the golf ball is, I mean, if the hips are rounding, on their ball and socket like that, and they're going in a, you, and they, the hips can take you down in a circle, you know, with the legs like this, then it's, it's hard to be consistent. But if I'm constantly going around like this, I can strike the same area every single time if I got it going. Just like a, uh, what is the the, the the wheel that goes around and dumps the water out? You've seen those before on, uh, like I said, uh, what's that? Like windmills or something? or uh, water mills, I don't know what they're called, but they just go around and they dump water in the same exact spot. Well, that's the same sensation that I'm trying to create here. When the right chest takes both arms back and the left arm, the left chest, bring both of them through. Oh yeah, by the way, this video is brought to you by My Foot Joy Shoes. I even got my Foot Joy shirt on today. Oh, gotta give Nike some credit because I do have my Nike hat on, my Callaway golf clubs, and I just got the, I'm, I'm playing the M3 now, the M3 TaylorMade with the orange Tensi Mitsubishi shaft in it. And let me tell you what, boy, whoo, I'm working that thing. Whoo, I gained, my carry on that club, before I got that club, my carry was 286, 287, something like that was my carry, you know, uh, on, my, on my driver. I had the M1 with the uh, white Tensi shaft in it. Now I got the M3, TaylorMade M3, with the orange Tensi shaft in it. I'll let you take a look at it. With the orange Tensi shaft in it, and it is the tour one. It is not, you know, the other one. It's the tour one. And I'm telling you what, I have gained 15 yards. Now, I'm not one to go, whoo, you know, I big this, but I have gained 15 yards on it. Oh, it's crazy. Me and my boy made some adjustments on it last night. So I can put it, look, the weights back here in the back because I like getting the toe coming through so I can hit, hit, hit that launch. I'm launching it somewhere around about 13, 14. Most of the time it's right around 13. I'm launching it, spinning it somewhere around. Uh, I think me and my man Paris out here, we was, I was spinning it right around 20, 21, 2200. And uh, it, it's, just, it's just phenomenal. But anyway. And I think a lot of it is, you know, even that speed, and you'll, and you'll see the increasing of your speed, of your speed, when you adapt what it is that I'm talking about. Right pec takes both arms back. Left pec, bring both of them through. 
This is Charles Calhoun, a.k.a. The Shade Tree Pro. As I told you before, it is called a golf swing for a reason. And I hope I just now showed you how to make a swing. As I said before, you know, I'm not trying to figure out what Mo Norman was doing. I'm trying to improve on it. Charles Calhoun, a.k.a. The Shade Tree Pro, and always good golfing.